I'm Edwin Liu, I'm an associate professor at the Children's Hospital of Colorado, um, I'm the director of the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease. So the purpose of the study was to estimate the cumulative incidence of celiac disease in the new generation of adolescents in the Colorado population. We know that the quoted incidence in the United States is about 1%, but that's with usually mostly adults, and that's also using a different generation uh, of individuals. And so this was a new study looking at the whole incidence idea again. So there, there were several major uh, findings in the study. The first thing was that 40% of the population actually has genes that put us at risk for celiac disease. The second point is that up to 5% of adolescents will develop celiac disease autoimmunity at some point during their life. The third point is that you know, we estimate that celiac disease occurs in up to 3% of adolescents in the Colorado population. Uh, the next one is that even though a lot of kids will develop autoantibody at some point, not all of them are actually going to go on to develop celiac disease, um, which means that some individuals actually have transient antibody positivity where their antibodies are present, but even on a regular diet, they actually seem to go away. And we, we only learn about this because we're able to do serial testing of autoantibodies on these kids from birth. So celiac disease autoimmunity means you have antibody positivity for celiac disease, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have celiac disease. Uh, it just means we don't know the status of your intestinal biopsies. Celiac disease, again, would be having biopsy-proven celiac disease. Now, I do think that celiac disease autoimmunity is probably an important stage, though, and I sort of see this as maybe like the first checkpoint towards developing celiac disease, and at that stage, it's probably a two-way street where the antibodies may progress to actually developing full-blown celiac disease, but it's also possible that these antibodies, if we're lucky, may just end up going away. And so more research needs to be done at that point. Okay, and if you have celiac disease, then I think we know what the implications are already. So I don't think genotyping the parents will be that useful. If you really wanted to know, you'd actually have to genotype the child. And the reason for this is because the genes that put you at risk for celiac disease are very common. So our study does show that up to 40% of the general population actually has genes that put us at risk for celiac disease. And so you know, if you're positive, it doesn't necessarily mean anything because not everyone with a gene is going to develop celiac disease. But if you're negative for this, then it virtually assures us that celiac disease isn't going to happen. So right now, if we were to only screen individuals based on symptoms, I think we would miss about half of the cases in the country. The other part is, if we only screened individuals based on a known risk, such as having type 1 diabetes or autoimmune thyroid disease or having a family history of celiac disease, I think we're also going to miss a, the majority of people because most people actually don't have these known risk factors. We've seen in this study that the only way you're going to pick up everyone is really by doing genetic testing to see who's actually at risk and then doing serial screening. Um, another important finding in this study, though, is that um, even though there was a very high rate of developing sleep disease within the first five years of life and also the first 10 years of life, it seemed to really slow down after age 10. So this study does uh, inform us further about you know, strategies that we may use for mass screening in the future if it ever were to be implemented. So I think the, the first part of this is that we have to recognize that celiac disease certainly isn't rare. You know, it's very common and in fact our study suggests that it might be a lot more common than we recognized before and that might be just because this is a new generation of kids that we're looking at. Um, so this does certainly serve as a reminder to the community to always be thinking about this condition. I, I think that this type of study uh, once again, uh, helps raise the awareness of how prevalent celiac disease is and also how important of a public health uh, problem this can be.